Gosh, I sure wish I had the aptitude to graduate from college, score well on the LSAT, get accepted into a law school, graduate from that law school, study for and pass the bar, and then become a practicing attorney. I know, I know everybody wants to just say I'm a family law attorney, but I'm general practice, a jack of all trades, a master of none. Let's look at section 120, entry upon private property. Well, first, actually, let's look at what I said. I said I could go over the general trespass law for Massachusetts which allows the RMV to trespass people. Does Section 120, Chapter 266, Section 120 of the General Laws of Massachusetts, does it allow the RMV to trespass people? This is uh, Commonwealth v. Eggleson, or Eggleson. This is an almost 50-year-old case where it held that another, in chapter 266, section 120, includes the state and municipalities. So was I wrong? I don't think so. Even if I was wrong, I was still right. Because she could have been trespassed, as she so rightly pointed out. But I wasn't wrong. Amazing. This is hers, uh, First Amendment Encyclopedia, Public Forum Doctrine. Uh, This says there's traditional limited and non-public forums. This is a Supreme Court case. This is the Minnesota voters v. Mansky. Uh, this one says there's also three types, but it's uh, traditional designated and non-public. Traditional limited and non-public. I normally break up limited and designated because they are different. But you can see that... Uh, and this guy, this guy right here, uh, David L. Hudson Jr., he's a law professor. I'm not claiming to know more than him. I wonder if he's licensed to practice in Massachusetts or if he shouldn't be giving his opinion. <laughs> anyway, the reason why I read these Supreme Court cases to you is because they give you an idea. The whole purpose of a Supreme Court case is to educate the lower courts on how the tests are supposed to go. And not just the lower courts, they're there to educate the lawyers who are arguing these cases to the lower courts and who are guiding their clients in determining what cases are good, that should be brought and what cases are not good that are losing cases. So lawyers read these Supreme court decisions and lower court decisions like Glick. And we glean from them, the tests, the, the ways in which the court analyzes things Because it's what the court does is it takes the pleadings. The court doesn't generally sua sponte determine whether there is a constitutional issue, a First Amendment issue. Somebody has to bring that up. Typically, it's going to be a lawyer. The lawyer on one side says, this is a First Amendment issue, Your Honor. This is a public forum. And therefore, this particular test The the government has to pass this particular test in order for this particular statute or whatever 
to be constitutional. And the other side will say, but your honor, this is not a traditional public forum. This is a limited public forum, or this is a non-public forum. And therefore, this is the test. And then the court will determine between the two arguments which test applies. And then they get to resolve the facts to determine whether or not the test was met. So you're right. I don't get to pick what a particular building is. But we know from Adderley v. Florida and from Minnesota Voters Alliance, the likelihood also from Coquinda, from uh, International Society of Krishna Consciousness v. Lee, uh, Spock v. Greer, we know from all of these cases the kinds of buildings and things that are traditional public forums and the kinds that aren't. We know the test. Haig v. CIO gave us the test. Sidewalks, parks, streets, things that have been places where you could go and speak from time immemorial. Those are the places that are traditional public forums. That's the whole reason why we read Supreme Court cases and really any other cases is to figure out the way the court should rule on a particular fact pattern. And I am as qualified as anyone else to give an opinion because the First Amendment allows me to give an opinion. I strongly suggest, if you're in Massachusetts, to seek out a qualified Massachusetts attorney to give you advice before you go out and make an ass out of yourself. But you're not smart enough to take that advice, so instead I will critique what you have done after the fact. Courts employ this doctrine. Yes, courts do employ this doctrine. They do. And if you read Minnesota's, Minnesota Voters Alliance v. Mansky, you'll see that attorneys from both sides presented arguments to the court and the court determined which side it favored. And if you read Adderley v. Florida, you'd think I'd have this memorized considering how many times I've gone here. The state, no less than a private owner of property, has power to preserve the property under its control for the use to which it is lawfully dedicated. That sounds very similar. Very similar to the language that I was using. I was using a mixture of that language and the officer's language in this video. Where are we at? About 9.30? The purpose served by the forum. The officer's talking. The officer said that you had to, you, you weren't doing, you weren't there for the purpose. If I remember correctly, I might not, but you get the point. It was a mixture between Adderley v. Florida and this officer's language. 602Q, I have never, ever used 602Q. 602Q is only if someone goes into a public building after it's closed. 602.1 is much more probable. Or uh, was it 602K? 
Uh, it's if you go in with the intent to disrupt the business. And yeah, that one applies to actual government stuff too. But anyway, you get the point. Glick. The point that this is what she had highlighted in her video. I've already pointed out that Glick was dealing with the Boston Commons. The Boston Commons is a public park. The public park. Uh, let's see. Wherever the wherever the title of streets and parks may rest, they have immemorially been held as blah blah blah. So parks are traditional public forums. Boston Commons is a park. Glick v. Kniff was dealing with filming in a public park. Now, that means the rest is, is dicta. Now, that, that being said, I, I believe you have the right to film public officials in the performance of their duty, even in a non-public forum. In summary, a citizen's right to film government officials, including law enforcement officers, in the discharge of their duties in a public space is a basic, vital, and well-established liberty safeguarded by the First Amendment. I believe that. I strongly believe that. But I skipped something. There is a qualification in there. And the qualification goes all the way back to Adelie v. Florida, to Eglison v. Commonwealth, or Commonwealth v. Eglison. To section 120, chapter 266, section 120, or chapter 266, section 123, which you so kindly pointed out. So my point still stands. The point of the video, the point of this video was that you were saying something was ruled on by the Supreme Court, and it was not. That was the point. Your video attempting to address me failed to rebut that point. You failed to rebut Section 120 applying to the RMV. You failed to say that I couldn't give an opinion And I couldn't help people understand the tests the court used to determine whether something was a traditional, limited, designated, or non-public forum. The Dairy Queen is a failure. She's a shrill harpy. And she doesn't have the conviction to actually stand in the RMV and fight. Now, if you think, if anyone thinks, that they have a constitutional right to do something, never back down. Turner didn't back down. Simon Glick didn't back down. Now, you don't have to get arrested. Obviously, you don't have to get arrested to sue. Uh, If there is some sort of a law in place that's going to prevent you from filming that you think is unconstitutional, you can sue. If you get 
trespassed. Uh, by the way, the shrill harpy, the Dairy Queen, does not understand the difference between being trespassed, which she was, and being arrested for criminal trespass, which she was not. She was lucky that she was only trespassed and not criminally trespassed. Anyway, my point is, if you think you have a constitutional right, then do something about it. Don't back out and be a snotty little bitch trying to be snarky with a cop for YouTube views. Stand up. File a lawsuit. Be an adult. If you're going to be a catalyst for change, be a catalyst for change. If you're going to be a money hound, well, you already are a money hound. Anyway, I'm done. Thanks for playing. You failed. Have a great day.